I played my fair share of movie tying games as a kid. When your funds are limited, go with what you know, right? And that's exactly what I did. Whether it be Spider-Man, Spider-Man 2, Ghost Rider, Hulk, Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, King Kong, Aladdin, Madagascar, Shrek 2, I mean, the list seriously goes on and on. Not all these games were incredible, in fact most of them were okay at best, but these types of games were almost like a lucky dip, where you're getting a cash grab or a genuine attempt at a game. You never knew until you picked the game up, but when these games were good, they were great. Or at least I thought so as a kid. Which brings me to The Lord of the Rings Return of the King the game, and how it was way better than it had any right being. Now immediately I have to make it clear, Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings trilogy is my favourite movie of all time. I can't watch one without the other two, and I watch the trilogy still to this day, multiple times a year. I've been doing this since I was about 7 or 8 years old when my grandpa showed me the movies, and of course, as soon as I saw the corresponding games on the PS2, I had to play them. Unfortunately, I played The Fellowship of the Ring first, which was just awful. I mean, really just absolutely god awful. Thankfully, the two towers were so much better leaving the tiebreaker with Return of the King. And, well, as I said, this game had no right being this good. Return of the King let me take part in those iconic battles from the second and third movie. It let me play as Gandalf, as Aragorn, as Gimli, as Sam. It let you experience the movie in game form, and that's all I could have asked for as a kid, which is why I played it religiously back in the day. I haven't played it since about 2004 or 2005 though, so 17 years is a bit of a stretch to blindly rely on nostalgia, which is why we're here today. I have one simple question. Is Return of the King as good as I remember? Just quickly, before we get started though, if you want to see more videos on the Lord of the Rings games, make sure to leave the video a like and comment below to let me know. Alright, let's get started. The short answer is no, it's not as good as I remember. It was never going to be. That's not to say Return of the King is now a terrible game, but in terms of what my nostalgia was saying, I thought this game was easily top 2 or 3 out of all the Lord of the Rings Middle Earth games, and that was not my experience with the game today. Again, that's not to say that Return of the King is a bad game, in fact I still had a good time revisiting it, but it didn't live up to my own lofty expectations. For a movie tie-in game though, it's still impressive and I think that boils down to the developer, EA's Redwood Shores, or as they'd later be called, Visceral Games. Before they were making their Dead Spaces and their Dantes, Visceral or Redwood were making a whole heap of PGA games with some movie tie-ins on the side. It was actually the amount of work they did on these projects that allowed them the chance to tackle a new IP like Dead Space and Dantes, which is pretty awesome. Anyway, I bring this up because when I hear Visceral, I think good game, even if their resume is filled with The Sims and PGA games. And what Return of the King shows, if nothing else, is that they cared about what they were making. Now, if you've never played Return of the King, it's a hack and slasher that has you venturing through three campaigns. You have the Path of the Wizard following Gandalf, Path of the King following Aragorn, Legolas and Gimli, and Path of the Hobbits following Sam as they all make their way through the events of the movie. The objective of each mission sees you going from point A to B, slaying as many orcs the best you can, getting a grading for each kill. That grade is not about what combination you use or anything like that, it's more like how in Devil May Cry the grade goes up the more you consistently attack. You can use the same combination over and over, just as long as you're consistently attacking, you'll go from fair to good to excellent to perfect. At the end of the level, all of those kills will be tallied together, leveling whichever character you chose for that mission, and that leads you to the purchasing screen, where you can buy combinations and unique abilities for either a single character, or if allowed, the entire cast. It's a solid gameplay loop that does incentivize trying out new combinations, learning what attacks affect what enemies best, and difficulty wise, this game is no joke. You need to be parrying attacks, using distance when you can and learning how quickly certain combos get off because you can get stun locked and your health will deplete quickly if you're careless with your playstyle. 
There was many a mission where my health bar was alarmingly low, barely getting me through to the end of a mission only being saved by a gracious potion, either in the level or dropped by an enemy. It's this challenge that makes leveling up and doing well in the levels so important because you want to increase your health or get a new, maybe quicker or harder hitting combo. It's a really solid gameplay loop with the strength of the entire game being that if you're a fan of the films, you finally get to experience these iconic locales and battles and that's still something I got a massive kick out of today. Battling through the Uruks in Helm's Deep, helping the Ents destroy Isengard, escaping from the ruins of Osgiliath, holding off the Orcs in Minas Tirith, going through the path of the dead, participating in the Battle of Pelennor Fields, making a final stand at the Black Gate. These are the levels that made me remember this game so fondly, and whilst I think now there is a bit of meh about what you're actually doing in these moments, it's still great as a fan to experience these moments. You may have noticed I left out Shelob's lair and the Tower of Ungor, and that's because unfortunately for me, they didn't work for whatever reason. I was playing the game on my 360 with my original copy of the game, and for some reason it just would not load the levels, which also means I couldn't experience the finale to the game and unlock all the new characters like Frodo, Merry, Pippin, and Faramir. This was a massive bummer because revisiting Osgiliath as Sam was easily my favourite level and I remember Shelob's lair and Ungle so fondly, but it wasn't in the cards for me for this playthrough. Whilst we're talking about levels themselves, I must say some are still great, again like Osgiliath, like Isengard. But there is a lot of levels that just tested my patience, the Battle of Pelennor Fields and Minas Tirith's wall defence being chief among them. These are iconic levels from the movie, but here they just drag on, especially Pelennor Fields. Minas Tirith isn't great, but if you mess up and get overrun, it's maybe like you're going back five minutes. It's annoying because you're basically just waiting around for the big towers to destroy, but not the end of the world. Pelennor Fields is so damn tedious though which is a shame because it starts out strong, as your only objective is just battling orcs and easterlings, and this was something I could get behind. It's nothing new by this point, but it's enjoyable. Then you need to take down the Oliphants by going back and forth on the battlefield because they're beelining it for Merry and Eowyn, and then you've got to take care of the Witch King of Angmar. And if Merry and Eowyn die, you're backstopping the Oliphants. Again, it's not that this takes a long time, but it's incredibly tedious after a while having to deal with a low health bar and orcs attacking whilst attempting this is just frustrating. Some of the mechanics just don't pair well together, and that's not even mentioning the at times questionable camera angles, especially in Minas Tirith that feels like you're frequently blinded by catapult fire. It's stuff like that, issues and little niggles that in the moment can be forgiven until you get sent back a ways for dying and then it's just frustrating. Whilst I'm whinging about a movie game, we have so many members of the cast reprise their roles here, even Christopher Lee, rest his soul, who is barely in the game. And we don't have Vigo, Orlando, or Miranda. It just sounds weird when they talk, because all the other characters are themselves, making me choose Gimli above Legolas and Aragorn because Jon actually reprises his role. It's just strange to me, and I'm sure it was a timing issue given these games have essentially no development cycle, but again, it just sticks out like a sore thumb when I have Gimli sounding like Gimli and Aragorn sounding like some guy. If you couldn't tell, this was not the nostalgicism of an experience that I was expecting, but I did still enjoy the experience of revisiting it. It is heavily carried by my nostalgia for the films, I will acknowledge that, but the core of the game is really solid. The hacking and slashing is solid, the various combinations, the slight variations between characters mixes it up somewhat. Trying to maximise your score per enemy, levelling up and unlocking new moves, unlocking the many interviews is still something I gotta kick out out of, it's still an enjoyable game. I wish some of these levels didn't frustrate me quite so much, but even in those levels there is cool moments like taking on the many trolls at Minas Tirith or fighting your way through the Pelennor Fields or fighting the King of the Dead. Return of the King is still a great movie tie-in game that my nostalgia had gotten out of hand with. As a fan of the movie, if nothing else, Return of the King helps me get that little bit extra from the films. It allows me to experience the iconic locales and battles with this cast of characters I've grown up with 
and love. It may not be perfect, but for what it is, it's a solid game that could have been a dumpster fire and sold as many copies, and I thank Visceral Games for putting that extra love and care into the game. It may not have held up today, but back in its time, it was a go-to game in my PS2, and I'll forever hold those memories close. Thank you all so much for watching this video on Return of the King. This was a different sort of video for me, it's like a mini retrospective. It's not intended to be as in depth and is a format I think can let me tackle a lot more movie games or obscure games that I have fond memories with, without dedicating the usual retrospective length and process. I really did enjoy revisiting this game though and I hope you enjoyed visiting the game with me. If you enjoyed the video make sure to leave it a like because it helps let me know that you enjoyed yourself. Comment below your thoughts on Return of the King and let me know if you want to see more videos like this because I have a lot of ideas in mind. Shout out to the channel members Infamous Sir Hellfire, featuring Gagiano, Christian Valgag and Cloud Connection for that extra level of support, I truly do appreciate it. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, go give my socials a follow if you fancy, at Mayor Hairbear, and I'll catch you all in the next video.